Hey everybody, how are you doing today? So I know it's been a while, some of you have been like asking me to um, come on and do a live video and stuff and it took a, a while for me to get back on it because I was going through a bit of emotional turbulence if the truth be known and it's all about um, the goal, the chase and the excuse. <clears throat> And I reckon that it must be the uh, detox phase of what we're doing that kind of brought this stuff to the surface. So I thought it might be interesting and um, useful perhaps to share it with you. So the first thing that I wanted to bring to our attention is must we always have a goal? I mean, if we think about it, it's very healthy to have a goal. And it's also said that it's very healthy for the neurons of the brain to kind of have a list so that you are always in a healthy kind of um, achieving manifestation um, and, you know, in a state of feeling that, like you have succeeded or that you are going for success, right? But the problem with that is, is that sometimes it can be quite overwhelming if we're always like on that chase, always on the chase to succeed, always on the chase to, to achieve a goal. So we need to be aware of when do we need to be on that thing and when do we need to take a bit of a chill pill, so to speak, and you know, not let it become too much of a, an overwhelming um, issue, you know, or a paranoia in a way. So, um, we need to be able to kind of break away from that because it can be very taxing, taxing, as I said earlier on, and it can be a bit of a pain in the bum. But the other thing that it could do, it could always also put your warrior archetype into a state of excess, which means um, the warrior aspect of you just always needs to win, always needs to be righteous. So we really do need to strike a balance with all of that, right? And so with that, during the detox phase, when I was feeling, you know, quite weepy and a bit stroppy and um, um, quite moody, to say the least, I actually realised that I was one of those people that were addicted to the goal. Yeah, that's right. Addicted to achieving. And I found that when I did actually like meet my my targets, um, I would then sort of like go into a phase of feeling... Um, like I'm at a loss or mourning or feeling sorry for myself and also feeling empty. And I thought, well, wait a minute, this isn't right. This has to be put right. And it's it's very similar to um, like always being perhaps addicted to carbs and sugar. You know, the more of those that you have, the more obviously you want of those. Right. So that's how I found myself addicted to the goal. But then I realised, of course, that in my particular situation, the reason why I'm addicted to achieving and addicted to the goal, which in some cases can be helpful but need to keep it in a balance, is that for me it came from the whole MS history thing again. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm sounding boring with all of that, but that's where it comes from. That's where it arose from, right? Because I was always like in a fight and always in a battle to um, you know overcome that situation and retrieve health so um, it did become you know quite an addiction you know an addiction for me a good one because it helped me out of the really nasty stuff mind you but there comes a point where you have to monitor like you know what it is and how you're doing it and what it is that you need to adjust in terms of what is it that I'm addicted to so we also have to look at the opposite end of that spectrum too, where, for example, you might be addicted to the excuse. So this is perhaps why I am not doing something and you're excusing yourself, yeah, and making it okay, making it righteous, making it justifiable, yeah? So if, if you're addicted to the excuse, then you need to find out, you know, what, how is that excuse helping you and how is it sabotaging with you so that you can get to the root of that, if that's the deal. And of course, the other aspect of it as well is if you're addicted to the goal like I was, it would probably therefore mean that you're also addicted to the chase, right? So it's like, you know, I've got a cat at home 
and um, you know when there's like a little insect or something she she's you know addicted to the chase but then when she actually gets to the trophy she's not interested or loses interest so an aspect of it could be am I addicted to the chase so um, what I invite you to do is number these up and then just investigate on them and see like which one is applicable to you and um, which one is interfering, causing delay, causing procrastination, causing stagnation and all of those, um, you know, weird and wonderful things that we put ourselves through, okay? Um, we just need to make sure though that um, with the excuse part in particularly that, you know, we are not using this as a scapegoat do you know what I mean? Justifying ourselves because that will lead to other sorts of um, troubles and challenges and um, get you backed up into all kinds of corners as a result, right? So um, in order to achieve this feat, if you want to call it that, or this particular challenge, we need to become aware of the miracle of every fleeting moment, be it good or be it bad. So you know, this is being able to practice being in the present moment, which isn't the easiest of things, whatever level of your um, awareness or healing uh, journey that you are on. It doesn't matter what level you are at. It always needs a lot of practice to be able to maintain a state of presence. And being able to be in presence means that we can be aware of that miracle that can be fleeting at times. And it will also give us the ability to see the magic in what we perceive as mundane. So think about that one. What is it that you perceive as mundane? What is it that you perceive as ordinary, which could lead you to perceive it as being stuck? But if every moment feels um, kind of alive and refreshed and anew, and you feel that every fleeting moment is filled with um, possibility and potential, then that gives you the mojo to be able to act upon it, right? So um, the other thing that I'd invite you to do is get breathing, get zen, get into nature, but most importantly, get simple, just simplify everything. The more simplified that you can do things, the better the outcome would be. So instead of aiming, aiming for the big, big goal, Aim for the goal of this day. Aim for the goal of this week. You know, keep it small and that makes it more manageable. It means that you don't get so overwhelmed. It means that your warrior archetype isn't being in excess and inflamed. And it means that you'll be able to proceed to the next level up. So the last thing that I want to leave with you is, is what you want genuine? Okay. And do you really need it? And is what you want and what you need in coherence, like do they coincide? So um, figure out if you're addicted to the excuse, the chase, or of course, you know, the goal, and um, try and bring it to a nice even balance. So um, with that guys, oh, it's darker this side. Yeah, it is. So with that guys, I'll leave my love with you. And um, I think the archetype is a very kind of interesting thing to explore. So perhaps the next time I come on, I'll be exploring the archetypes within and what it is that they um, contribute to our psyche, good and bad. So I'll see you again real soon. Best of luck to everybody. Best wishes, kisses. This is Helen Makes Miracles. Over and out.